Hey guys, I'm Eric Voss, and a lot of you have been asking about this new series on HBO called Westworld. You probably caught some of those trippy promos that HBO has been running before episodes of, well, everything. And now that Game of Thrones is winding down with only two more shorter seasons left, HBO clearly wants a new epic series to carry the torch and to give viewers a new show with extreme violence and so much in the background. But seriously, I think Westworld is going to be awesome. So what is it? Westworld is a show that takes place in the near future with a Western themed amusement park filled with extremely lifelike robots called hosts. And for a bargain of $40,000 a day, you can live in the lawless world of the old American West, ride horses, shoot people, have sex with hookers, talk about the deep philosophical questions about the nature of humanity. You know, real cowboy stuff. And just like like any sci-fi story that deals with artificial intelligence, the robots prove that they cannot be trusted. Now, if this whole concept of a futuristic theme park that becomes unstable and kills all the guests sounds a bit like Jurassic Park, that's because both Westworld and Jurassic Park were the brainchilds, brain children, of the same guy, Michael Crichton. He wrote and directed the 1973 movie Westworld, which the show is loosely based on. And Michael Crichton loves stories where mankind's attempt to play God blows up in our faces. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys dinosaurs. God creates man. Man destroys God. Man creates dinosaurs. Now, Westworld the movie is definitely worth checking out. In that version of the story, Westworld is actually one of three sections of the park, along with Medieval World and Roman World. Now, these were obviously inspired by places like Frontierland and Fantasyland and Disneyland and Disney World, the second of which opened just two years before this movie came out. So Michael Crichton was clearly having some very dark thoughts while in line for It's a Small World. So in the 70s version of Westworld, Richard Benjamin and James Brolin play Peter and John, two buddies looking for a vacation from Peter's marital problem. So they head to Westworld, where they have a great time shooting, drinking, gambling, and robot screwing. That's until a robot disease begins to cause all the robots to go haywire. And Yul Brynner plays the main antagonist, the gunslinger. He's a creepy, murderous cowboy robot who spends half the movie hunting Peter down, and he's nearly impossible to destroy. I actually think the gunslinger might have been an inspiration for the Terminator. Now, in the HBO version of Westworld, these two guests are now William and Logan, played by Jimmy Simpson and Ben Barnes. And while the show does look like it'll go deep into William's depression and need for an escape, it's really the broader world of characters that seem to be getting the spotlight. This includes other adaptations from the film, like the engineer of the host, Bernard Lowe, played by Jeffrey Wright, and Ed Harris's mysterious Man in Black. It also includes the lore a host android feeling pangs of consciousness that's played by Ed and Rachel Wood, and of course, Sir Anthony Hopkins as Dr. Robert Ford. He's pretty much the John Hammond of this nightmare theme park. I wanted to show them something that wasn't an illusion. I designed every part of this place. And another quick detail about the film Westworld, the way you can tell whether someone's a robot is by looking at their hands. The idea being that the robot designers couldn't create authentic human hands, and that makes sense because human hands are actually one of the hardest things for artists to sketch accurately. We'll see if that comes up in the show at all. Now, the movie's only about 88 minutes long, and we barely get to see Westworld in action before everything starts going to hell. So just like Jurassic Park, it's more of the story of when this theme park devolves into a nightmare, but with nothing close to the scale or production quality Jurassic Park had. But it's the concept that Westworld is remembered for, and the creators of the HBO show loved it so much, they wanted to expand it into this vast universe filled with interesting characters, something like Game of Thrones or Lost or any other show that people obsess over. 40 years after the movie came out, society has been reshaped by the internet, video games, virtual and augmented reality. Like we've created secondary digital lives for ourselves to escape into. So how has that sense of escapism changed who we are? That's what Westworld is all about. And you may be thinking, wait, we already saw what happens when modern filmmakers try to expand the world of a Michael Crichton classic, but do not worry because Westworld isn't just an attempt to cash in and stretch out a franchise. There really isn't a franchise to cash in on. The original Westworld movie barely made $10 million. This is just a cool new show with an all-star cast with Game of Thrones production value and yes, a lot of violence and sex. But there are a few key things making this show unique that I'm really excited about. First, Westworld digs deep into the philosophy of its concept. The creators of this show are Jonathan Nolan and his wife, Lisa Joy Nolan. You may know Jonathan Nolan from co-writing the movies The Prestige and Interstellar with his brother, Christopher Nolan. The Nolans are fascinated by characters whose philosophies conflict 
conflict with their humanity. So in The Prestige, it was magicians whose perfectionism forced them to sacrifice loving home lives. And in Westworld, it's society's need for escapism forcing us to sacrifice our empathy for our fellow man. Or in this case, our empathy for our fellow artificial man. And critics are raving over how thought-provoking this show is. The best science fiction is a reflection of our current society. And just like Stanley Kubrick questioned the dangers of artificial intelligence in his movie 2001 A Space Odyssey, Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Westworld is tackling big questions like what makes us human and where do we draw the line between a dehumanized person with no moral code and a humanized machine programmed with morality. In 2001, Kubrick visualized those themes in the monolith that was his recurring symbol for human technology through the ages. And in Westworld, Nolan appears to be using the Vitruvian Man, which is based on a famous sketch by Leonardo da Vinci. A lot of people consider the Vitruvian Man to be the first anatomically correct sketch of the human body. And to suggest humans are the product of intelligent design. That obsession with the harmonic balance of the human anatomy may be connected with the idea of designing the host's hands just right. So Kubrick used the monolith to suggest mankind's awe of technology, and this Vitruvian man seems to be Westworld's symbol for mankind's mastery over technology, their pride as they now consider themselves God. Now you may have recognized that these are very similar themes to the show Battlestar Galactica, which a lot of people have been comparing it to. Both shows are deep, amazing remakes of kind of campy 70s sci-fi. But there are two other classic artificial intelligence movies that Westworld looks like it's pulling from, Blade Runner and the recent movie that it inspired, Ex Machina. These movies both featured the Turing test in which a human interacts with a computer seeking signs of real artificial intelligence. And if you look at this scene with Dr. Ford and Dolores, it definitely has that same cold, creepy tone of those famous questionnaire scenes. And the fact that Westworld wants to evoke those same movies in particular is very promising for the philosophical wait this show will have. Moving on to another thing I'm excited about for Westworld, the sense of mystery. Another executive producer on the show is J.J. Abrams, and this guy has turned keeping us in the dark into a high art form. Uh, the withholding of information, you know, um, doing that intentionally is much more uh, engaging. It's why the first season of Lost was so great. Abrams knew just how to tease little hints to keep us obsessed with the central mystery of the show. And so what is the central mystery of Westworld? Well, uh, the Nolans and J.J. Abrams are the most secretive filmmakers in show business. They don't let anything leak. But judging from the first few episodes that critics have been able to see, Westworld is going way deeper than the simple sci-fi thought experiment that the movie was. Specifically, it's looking at the possible nefarious motives behind the park. So there's this mysterious Delos Corporation. They're the shadow group that funds the park. And looking at the promotional website that HBO set up, I'm getting some major Dharma Initiative vibes. You might remember that as a creepy organization from Lost. This also reminds me of the Wayland Corporation site set up for the movie Prometheus, which is written by Damon Lindelof, who of course co-created Lost with J.J. Abrams. But probably the most obvious one is Ed Harris's character, the Man in Black. Now, if you stuck with Lost through the later seasons, one of the more interesting villains was this guy, who was also known as the Man in Black. This guy was an evil, immortal figure who manipulated people on the island to try to escape. Similarly, this Man in Black is an immortal host with kind of a cloudy morality, probing the outskirts of Westworld in search of a maze to access the park's inner sanctum. Now, I personally love the later seasons of Lost, and the Man in Black was a big reason why. I kind of wish he was there from the beginning, but then again, spoiler alert, I guess he technically was in smoke form? Anyway, I love that Westworld is giving us this big mysterious character right out of the gate. And I think we can all agree that Lost at its best was a really, really fun ride. And I'm excited for that kind of gripping storytelling to come back to television. And since I brought up a character who's obsessed with mazes, I really should talk about the amazing visuals of this show, the look of this world. I mentioned Stanley Kubrick earlier. Now, Jonathan Nolan, along with his brother Chris, are obsessed with Kubrick, specifically Kubrick's mastery of creating elaborate intellectual mazes in his films. For example, in The Shining, the psychological maze that Jack is trapped in manifests into a literal lab at the end of the movie with himself becoming the Minotaur monster. The Nolans have used this same geometric maze imagery in movies like Inception and Interstellar, and Jonathan Nolan appears to be doing the same in Westworld, judging from these shots of spiral staircases and of a mysterious maze pattern in the table and in the dirt. So not only is Westworld Kubrickian in the way it examines sci-fi themes, it's also Kubrickian in its visual design. But also, let's not forget, Westworld is a Western, and there's just something about Westerns that captivates American audiences 
experiences, the gorgeous landscapes, the period sets and costumes, the whole lawless spirit of the world. It's also so reminiscent of the westerns of John Ford, and more recently, the amazing HBO series Deadwood. I actually wouldn't be surprised if Westworld is using some of the same Deadwood sets and costumes. And this western iconography fits really well with the Westworld sci-fi concept. So why is that? Like a lot of times movies will try to mix the natural world with futuristic tech like in Wild Wild West or Cowboys and Aliens and it just feels off. But Westworld doesn't fall into that trap. That's because its dueling settings are thematically linked. So you see westerns at their heart were really about simple life on the prairie and how technology, often represented by the railroad, ended that way of life. Technology replacing humanity. That is Westworld at its core. So if you're seeing sleek futuristic tech imagery like something from Ex Machina or gritty western imagery like in Deadwood, it all feels like one thematically connected world. And that is a big reason why Westworld could become the new HBO series people obsess over. And sure, Game of Thrones is still pretty much dominating TV, but once its watch has ended, keep an eye out for this show to take over. And unlike Game of Thrones, Westworld doesn't have these huge source novels to pull storylines from. It's just a short movie from the 70s and it's already moving well beyond. So we have no idea where this story is headed. That is super exciting. And if you loved any of these movies or TV shows that I referenced, Jurassic Park, Lost, Battlestar Galactica, Blade Runner, or The Prestige, or Deadwood, you're probably going to dig Westworld. So let me know what you think of the show. I'd love to do breakdowns of it, but really the show would have to take off first. So let's see what happens. If you like this video, please like it and share it with your friends. And of course, subscribe to New Rockstars. That's one way you can help grow this channel. Another way is to contribute to us on Patreon. A huge thank you to all of our current patrons on Patreon. You guys are amazing. You're a big reason why we're able to get videos out. You can also follow New Rockstars on Twitter at New Rockstars for information about when our videos are coming out. Or you can follow me on Twitter at EA Voss with any thoughts or theories or questions or things that you love about Westworld. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Bye.